Can we all stand to our feet? Welcome to day service number three of Habitation. Have you guys been blessed so far? Hallelujah. You guys ready to worship? What I love is how many of you know the word says we are seated in heavenly places? So right now, we are in a heavenly place. Right now, the hosts of heaven are also in this room. It's not just the 400 or whatever is in this room, but the host of heaven has gathered with us to give glory to our King. Amen? So I believe that as we worship tonight, as the team starts, that heaven is gonna become our reality tonight. I am praying and pressing and believing that heaven is gonna become our reality tonight. And not the going away to heaven, but heaven will become our reality here. The power, the authority, the presence of who Jesus is, his power, his authority, his kingdom on the earth. I want it to be materialized in our reality tonight. Is that okay? Is that too big? You see, the problem is, one second, one second, guys. The problem is, Pastor William talked about Uzzah today. 1 Corinthians 13, when Uzzah went and grabbed the ark, how many of you remember that? On the threshing floor when the ark stumbled. No one remembers that? All right. <laughs> when Uzzah went to grab the ark, if you read about Uzzah, it says that he was the son of Abinadab who had the ark in his house for 20 years. When the Philistines returned the ark, David put the ark in the, in the house of Abinadab for 20 years. And so Uzzah's sin wasn't necessarily stopping the ark. Uzzah's sin was familiarity with it. The, the stop in the ark was a result of where Uzzah's heart and mind was before because it had been in his father's household for 20 years. And I think this is the problem we get. We have movements of God that start out great for a year or two and then they start to fade is because we get familiar with the glory. We get familiar with God's presence. And God said to Aaron and his sons, I must be regarded. He said to Moses, I must be regarded as holy. Does anyone regard our Lord as holy? That he's not, listen, he's not just savior. He's not just king, even though he is those things, but he is Lord. He is Lord of our life. He is master and we are his bond servants. We have to approach our Lord with this perspective that I will never get familiar with you. We have to approach our Lord and our King with this perspective that I will always regard you as set apart. That's what the word holy is. I will always regard you as holy in my mind and in my heart, that I will not reach out and touch your holy things without first regarding you as holy. And so God has done, and I believe will continue to do amazing things through habitation, say amen. But we can never get familiar with the presence of God and the glory of God, because when we regard him as holy, I believe that the floodgates of heaven are gonna open up tonight. Lift your hands to heaven. I said, I believe that the floodgates of heaven are gonna open up over habitation, every person watching online, every person here. But he must be regarded as holy. As soon as we see him in a familiar spirit, he cannot move. We have to receive the ones that didn't receive Jesus, that were the most familiar with him. It's when he could do the least amount of miracles. So, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, we regard you as holy tonight. We not only regard you as king, we not only see you as savior, we not only see you as comforter, but you are our Lord, you are our master. We are your bond servants, and we've come, no matter how many times we've sung the same song, Jesus, we're gonna sing it in a brand new way tonight. No matter how many times we've shouted the name of Jesus, we're gonna shout it in a brand new way tonight. And I am asking, Lord, that you come, Holy Spirit, like you've never come before, that the reality of heaven would be our reality tonight, that what is true in heaven will become true in our earth, and we will never become familiar with your glory, Jesus. Let us have a beyond the veil experience tonight in Jesus' name, a third day resurrection in this third service. 
Let it be a service of resurrection, Father. Come and fill your temple, I pray in Jesus' name. Do what you've never done, Lord. Do what you've never done. Holy Spirit, we are ready, and we will never take you lightly. We will never take you familiarly. We will behold you in all your glory. We want to see you in all your glory, God. We are ready, so tear the veils of our hearts. Tear the veils of our minds, and come in all of your glory, and let your life be our reality tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, and everybody with a loud shout said amen.
Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness true. Jesus, Jesus, silence fear. And Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, in your name is love. The shadows can't deny your name cannot be overcome. Your name is a light forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. Your
It's beautiful. Keep lifting it. Lift your worship.
stars decide to play the name that is forever. Amen. Behold him crucified, the tears, the blood, the wine, the earth trembles at his side. Behold the nailed hands, the scars, the side, the blood, the name that is forever. Amen. Behold him crucified, the tears, the bread, the wine, the earth trembles at his side. Jesus. every voice. It's going to break chains tonight. singing, keep singing.
Come on, lift your voice. Lift your hands. He's worthy, worthy. Jesus, you're holy. All righteous. A Savior and Redeemer. There's nobody like you, Jesus. Hallelujah, be your holiness. Be worshipped in this place, Lord. Be high and lifted up. Be high and lifted up, Jesus. Who is like you, Lord? There's no one like you. We can search the whole world and find no one like you, Jesus. So come dwell in our midst, Lord. Come fill every life, Jesus, and have your way. Holy Lord. Holy is your name. Worthy of all and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all. Your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all. Jesus, thrones and dominions, all powers in positions, your name stands above. Jesus, Jesus, your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above them all. Above all thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name. Your name is the highest, your name is the greatest. 
bless your name, God. We stand before your throne, crying holy. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The whole earth is full of your glory. Let us see your glory. What an honor, God. We may behold your glory. To Moses, you said, you can't see my face. To Paul, he said, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. So close. We're so close, Jesus. Tonight we lay down everything at your feet. We lay down all dreams, all ambitions. We lay down our schedule. We lay down our prayers. We lay down everything that we're asking for. We lay it all down at your feet, Jesus. We only want you, God. You are our greatest reward. All that we long for is in you. Try. 
sing that one more time. God, that you did not only die for us, but as us, you took all of our sin, all of our shame, all of our guilt, all of our past, you crucified it on the cross, but in the same way we died as you, we rose with you, you rose as us, and so as this third service of habitation, Father, let this be a third day manifestation that what has died, let it come alive in Jesus' name. Let a resurrection power sweep through this room tonight in the mighty name of Jesus, that prison doors would be flung wide open, that walls would be broken down, that walls of religion, that deception we didn't even know was there would be broken down in Jesus' mighty name, that you resurrect marriages tonight in Jesus' mighty name that cancer would be destroyed tonight, that high blood pressure and sugar diabetes, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, that the lame would walk, the blind would see, the deaf would hear, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that every numb part in us would come alive again, in Jesus' mighty name, every calloused part, every hurt part, God, every offense, in Jesus' mighty name, would come alive by your resurrection power because you are the resurrection and you are the life. And though it may seem that we are dead, yet, yet, yet we shall live by the power of Jesus in us. So Jesus, come manifest yourself in this place tonight, I pray. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. If you believe it, church, shout amen. Shout it again! Amen! Let it be so, Lord! Let it be so, Jesus! We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Have your way tonight, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said amen. Can we bless God one more time? Come on, hug on somebody as you sit down. hard time stopping worship but we don't stop we just continue amen how many of you know that giving is a part of our worship it said pastor gerardo agrees it said how many of you know giving is a part of our worship it's actually the highest form of worship when you give yourself i'm not only talking about money but giving is the highest form of worship we give of ourselves when we lay our life down as a sacrifice to the lord so quickly, I want to get the ushers ready with the buckets, and we're going to give tonight. Are you guys ready to give? Are you guys honored? Have you guys been blessed by habitation so far? We, um, I don't know the exact numbers, but I know this costs, to put one of these on, 35, 40, well over $40,000 to put one of these on, and I'm believing and I pray that you pray and believe with me that we can do more than just two a year. That was really sucky. It said, I'm praying and believing that we can have more habitations than just bi-yearly. I am believing, see, because we're not about a conference, it's not about a conference, it's not about 
hyping people up. It's not about any of that. It's about establishing the kingdom of God on the earth. It's about making houses of habitation. This houses of habitation, we are going to start, we're starting tomorrow in Franklin and in Chicago and in Dallas. And I believe this is going to expand all over the country and all over the earth. Amen? But it's establishing houses of habitation, places where the Lord is ministered to. So I want to encourage you to do what you can. Hear the Lord. Obey. Pray into sowing in what God is doing here. Because the secret of the kingdom is when you sow into the house of God, in your life you will reap. That which you sow, that you will reap. Amen? And so we need to sow into what God is doing. And without those that give, we can't do these. And so it's so vitally important that we listen to the Holy Spirit. And it doesn't matter the amount. Listen to the Holy Spirit and obey. Someone say listen and obey. Listen and obey. It's about giving God our best and our first. We don't give God leftovers. I said we don't give God leftovers. We don't, I said last Sunday in Dallas, we don't give God crunchy leftover spaghetti from the microwave. We give God the best. Amen? I hate microwaved food. We give God hot food, the best that we can give. He is first and he is best. Amen? Let's lift it. If you have it in your hand or you can give at uh, habitationministries.org. And you can also text 84321. Yeah, all that information is there. So please be obedient and sow into what God is doing so we can expand these habitations across the country and have more than two a year. Amen? So Father, in Jesus' name, as our gifts are lifted to heaven, Father, I pray that these gifts be a sweet-smelling aroma to you, that you be well-pleased, that they be our worship, Father that they be the best that we can give, no matter the amount. This is our best, this is our first, this is our life wrapped up in these gifts. So come, Lord Jesus, breathe on these gifts, breathe on these givers. I pray that you bless every single person financially, bless their marriages, bless their children, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father. And we agree and we sow into what you are doing on the earth because we want to see the manifestation of heaven on the earth. We want to see the reality of the kingdom of God manifesting in every part of our lives. So we love you, Father. Accept these gifts as a sweet-smelling aroma to you. Accept them as our life. We love you in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said amen. Amen. All right, ushers, go ahead and pass those buckets. As you do, we have a School of Habitation video we want to show you guys real quick. Amen. Amen. Is this not working now? Hello, hello, hello. There we go. You guys are hungry tonight. Oh my gosh. Okay. Really quickly, please help me out. Thanks. I wanted to share just two important things and then we're, we're going to let the wind come. Um, so the video you just saw, we, we started a school last January called School of Habitation, and and our heart, you know, is not just to do events, but to build homes for the Lord, if you haven't got that yet. 
But in order to have homes for the Lord, we need fathers and mothers leading those homes. The scriptures are clear that there's a difference between hired hand pastors and people who actually treat the sheep as if they're fathers and mothers and would give their lives for the sheep. And so we believe that part of what God is asking us to do is to immerse a group of people for nine months into this kind of environment every single day. Well, oh God, did I just prophesy? It's only Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, our staff just had a panic attack. You never know. But in Dallas, we started this. It's a nine-month program. It's a three, well, it goes for nine months, but you can go up to three years. And third year is really for those that feel a vocation to leadership, whether it's pastoring, uh, being a worship leader, whatever area of ministry you feel God's calling you. And we believe that as we establish risen nations in the earth and connect with other churches, that through the school, we're gonna be able to send leaders. Like you realize that the goal is not for you. When I, when I was raised, you know, I'm raising my kids right now. But when I was, you know, growing up in my father's house, the goal was not that I'm 50 and still there. I mean, as much as I think they would enjoy that. You guys would love that with all the chaos and kids. And... <laughs> nope. The goal is, is that I have my own home and I build my own family. And, you know, I think in the, in the Western church today, it's become about let me build my mountain that everybody runs to. But you got to understand something. In Ezekiel 47, it talks about this river that starts. Everyone say starts. Starts in the sanctuary. But it leaves the sanctuary and it begins to build. And what starts ankle deep begins to turn into a river. And it says that as this river flows and goes, that it brings healing to the nations. And wherever it goes, it brings healing. And wherever it stops, it turns into a swamp. And, and I think that the, what the scriptures are telling us is that the healing properties of the kingdom is in the expanding and going of the kingdom. But I think we've got it twisted in this hour where it's more come ye rather than go ye. And we need to raise up some people who learn how to build an altar, build a table, and hit the road. And so our hearts is that we shoot a generation out into the culture, not to just one location, but we shoot them out into the world like arrows to turn synagogues into temples. Amen. You know, I think about when growing up, you know, we, we would see the crusades. Uh, the Lord blessed my, my uncle, Pastor Benny, to fill stadiums and arenas. And, you know, Madison Square Garden, 30,000 inside and five outside. They couldn't get in. And I think about those days and the miracles and the power and the healing, and we need it. We need these days back. Amen. We need that anointing to come rushing back. But I always thought, imagine if we could capture pastors capture leaders, right? I've noticed in my, in my years of doing events, uh, administrating them, also leading them in this capacity, that sometimes what ends up happening is, is you come into a room like this, like how many of you would say, worship was unbelievable tonight? There, and you touch something, you taste something, and you could go for hours. Like there's this grace, there's this glory, and, and you go back in a sense to church on Sunday and you don't taste it. And if we're not careful, we're going to hurt pastors, not help them. And we're going to raise rebellious people that want to just, you know, shake up everything in their church. And I'm all about it. But it comes only by way of honor. And it comes by us finding shepherds. And I know so many leaders and shepherds that have come to me. And, and they're like, they're lonely. And, they're, and they feel like they're on an island. And they're doing the best that they know how. They're doing the best that they can to build and steward what God's given them, but they're a limb all by themselves. They've got to get connected to a body. And so our heart with the school, our heart with habitation is, is that you would come and we as a family, living stone upon living stone, would begin to build a dwelling place for the Lord. And this would not only spawn churches, but it would support other churches that have vision, that have a unique calling churches that only they can shepherd but we believe the school is an amazing program to help them to serve them and to raise them and so I want to encourage you we we started the school in Dallas and just recently the Lord said I want you to move it to Franklin so as of January a bunch of our students are moving and we're just coming we're going to flood this area 
We're gonna start in January. We don't even know where we're gonna gather yet, but I'm telling you right now, we'll have somewhere and we're gonna start a school here, amen? And so there is, uh, and, and as you get to know us, we don't know, you know, anyone that tells you they know their five-year plan does not know. I, I'm sorry. The scriptures say nobody knows what even tomorrow holds. So don't worry about it. Follow the wind. Imagine if we actually started following the cloud as the body of Christ again. I think we need to you know, start talking about our 5,000 year plan, the one where you know, it ends with heaven and earth becoming one rather than our little five year strategies, right? And so our desire is, uh, as a school is to raise up leaders and establish leaders. And at the end of year three, if you make it all the way through, we actually ordain you and we send you and establish you. And uh, we believe that this is gonna be a plumb line, a funnel for church, a church planting movement, amen? And, uh, and so with that being said, you can, you can actually apply out in the lobby. You can go to schoolofhabitation.org if you feel the tugging on your heart. And uh, Pastor Jenny, who's our director, she wasn't able to be here. We honor you. I know you're listening online, Pastor Jenny and Tanner. Come on, let's honor our director. Her daughter had a baby just like yesterday, and I said, it's fine. You can stay home, I guess. So, um, but you, she'll reach out to you and, and walk you through the process. So that's schoolofhabitation.org, or, or you can apply in the back. And lastly, if you're a pastor in this room or a leader, would you please stand up if you're a leader or a pastor in a community? And I want you guys to really honor them. Come on, honor them. What are you doing? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> we love you guys. We honor you. Uh, if you are one of those leaders, those pastors, or you feel God tugging you into, into that, we want to connect with you. We want to figure out how we can serve you, how we can help you within your community. Again, our heart is not to just come have an event. You know, I've watched, like, it's like this one night stand mentality in ministry today. We pop into a city and we're out. No, we want to, if we're going to build a habitation, there's no house of habitation without a family inside of it. And so we have um, a way that if you're a pastor, you can connect in with us. And someone from our team is going to reach out to you. And we're going to figure out how we can best serve you, whether it's resources, uh, whether it's just having someone to talk to. Pastor Tanner, uh, who's our executive pastor in Dallas, um, he is we've put him over this role of being able to connect with pastors. And so you're gonna, you're gonna hear directly from a son of this house and a son of this ministry. Uh, and we just wanna figure out how we can serve you, amen? So if you wanna do that, uh, habitationministries.org, there's a little uh, tab in there called Houses of Habitation. And literally all you have to do is put, just click the link that says join the family and someone will reach out. And we just wanna find a way to take the right arm and the left arm and bring them together. Amen? The scriptures say the left arm can't say to the right arm, I have no need of you. But this is how we do church today. Everyone's got their own vision and their own plans. But what the Lord is landing on in this hour is we will only go as far as we're willing to go together. Amen? Okay. That's the announcements. Now let's see what happens. I have no idea what we're going to do tonight other than we're going to ask him to come and just ruin us. Okay? Wound us with love heal bodies. We're just going to go after it, all right? I, I want to, how many of you uh, have come to all of the sessions? Raise your hand. You come to all the sessions. All right. How many of you, this is your first session? Raise your hand. If your first session, raise it high. We honor you. God bless you and good luck. All right. <laughs> It's been, uh, it's, it's been wild in here, and, and we're going we're gonna to keep that going. But I want to start here. This morning I talked about in John chapter 2 that Jesus goes into the temple with a premeditated whip, and he starts flipping tables, and he sees pigeons, in the Greek that word is doves, inside of cages, and he starts ripping them open. And the, the zeal, it says, the zeal for his house eats him up inside. And the disciples remembered that about him. And how many of you know he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? 
So the implication, not the implication, the immutability of God, which means he doesn't change, means that till today, zeal is still eating him up for his house. And you are that house. But in John chapter two, he goes in and he is going in intentionally to rip cages open and he lets the dove out. And today, in the religious system of the world, in our multiple services, and again, if you do multiple services, I have nothing against against it at all, but I would challenge you in this. We rush in and out of God's presence and in that insult his glory and wonder why there's no power. If you expect, all right, to give God a timesheet and think that the Lord is going to follow you, you are deceived. The scriptures say in Romans 8, 8, Uh, 14 it says those that are led everyone say led led by the spirit those are the sons of God you don't have the ability capacity or strength to lead the Holy Spirit you have to learn how to follow him the scriptures say it's not by might not by power but by the spirit of God right I love I love Peter in the Bible he, he comes to Jesus right after Judas betrays him. And in John 13, he comes to Jesus and he says, Lord, I will, I will die for you. No one's going to come get you. I've got your back. I'm going to die for you. And he's trying to prove his devotion to God right after Judas betrays him. I mean, Peter is, he's a smart guy. He's thinking, this guy left him, but I'm going to prove my devotion. I'm going to tell him that I'll die for him. And he goes, oh, okay, Peter. Actually, Peter, you're going to deny me three times. I've always found it funny that he chose a rooster crowing to be the symbol of the denial of Jesus because in that part of the world, for the rest of his life, a rooster crowing was what wakes you up in the morning. And I think he always remembered, don't forget the promise you made the Lord. But he denies him three times and and Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. And I think what he's really saying is, Peter, you, it, it'll be impossible for you to follow me into this next season in your own strength. It's impossible, I feel this strongly for many of you, impossible to follow Jesus into this next season in the own strength of your devotion. You see, many of you are not struggling with drugs, alcohol, things of the flesh. You're not really tempted by pornography. Maybe some of you need to get free from that, but many are not not actually really dealing with things of the flesh in this room. The sense I get is, is that many are dealing with things like being disgusted with your inconsistency with God. Anyone, anyone willing to admit? I, 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 get, I get in that circle and I'm like, you're the worst Christian of all time. You spent 10 minutes with God. Benny spent eight hours a day. You spent seven. What is wrong with you? How many of you know you can't even say that Jesus is Lord without the Holy Spirit? Wow. You have no ability to please God within your own strength. And there's certain... It's not certain. I'm finding everything about God only comes by way of surrender. You know, like we're, we're sheep. This is what the scriptures call us. Sheep don't know where they're going. If, let's say a sheep went to another sheep and said, do you know where we're going to go today? The sheep wouldn't say, well, we're, I found the directions. We're actually going oh, under this valley and then we're going to hit this mountain. And no, 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 these are dumb animals. I'm sorry. They don't know where they're going. You know what they know? They know the shepherd's voice. And they would say, I actually don't know where we're going, but I know where he is. And I'm just going to follow what he's doing. And so the, the invitation to Peter was, Peter, you can't follow me in this next season. You're straight. But by the power of the Spirit, it would take a man who was unwilling to be associated with Jesus. It would take a man who went from... I will die for you to denying you. The Holy Spirit endues him with power. The Holy Spirit breathes into his heart. And it would take a man like that and throw him into the temple. And he would start proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom without shame. Be beaten, excited about it, and immediately go and start preaching again. That's called the power of the Holy Spirit. History would tell us that Peter was crucified. History says this. 
on the same thing on a tree, but was unwilling to even hang the same way as his, as his Lord Jesus. So he said, flip me upside down. What would take a scared man unwilling to even associate himself with Jesus and all of a sudden he's willing to actually die for him now? It's called the power of the Holy Spirit. And so today what we have is we have Father, Son, Holy Bible. And how many of you know that it says the letter kills, but the Spirit brings life? In other words, without the Spirit of God, this is just another book. But with the Spirit of God, it begins to breathe in your hands. With the Spirit of God, it begins to read you. It becomes living, active. And you'll read John 3, 16, and you won't just think, oh yeah, I know that verse. All of a sudden, it'll start eating you up inside. Like, I, I sometimes get stuck on, you're the light of the world. Like, when he calls us that. I just keep reading it. I'm the light of the world. And the scriptures are alive, and so it just reads you, you're the light of the world. Until you actually start believing this crazy stuff. It's called the Spirit of God. And so what we've done in church in the West is we, because the Holy Spirit is undefinable, because we don't really know how to form him. We kind of put him in the corner somewhere. We don't really understand him because he comes in multiple manifestations. I mean, the, the scriptures describe the Holy Spirit as having seven manifestations that burn before the Lamb of God day and night. What does that even mean? He came like tongues of fire. He came like wind. He came in languages. Like, there's, there's no defining the Spirit because it's Spirit. Everyone say Spirit. So the Son, yeah, that's, we get that. The Father, we get that. But we don't know who the Holy Spirit is, so we push Him in a corner. We tell Him to be a good boy. Here's our timesheet for the day. Help us get to our plans. <laughs> Man. But John 3, listen, describes the Holy Spirit like this. The mark of his ministry is wind. He's a person. But the mark of his ministry is you don't know where he's going. You didn't know where it came from. But you can hear it and you can feel it. And the mark of those that join his ministry is they're like the wind. You don't know where they come from. You don't know where they're going but you feel it when they're around. You see, I, I, I read a, an actual account. Anyone ever heard of the Welsh Revival? I, I read this, this actual account where a man that was in London wanted to find out what was happening in Wales, and he was a journalist, and so he finds his way to Wales because he keeps hearing about this revival is breaking out. And when he gets there, he finds the first man he can find on the street. He walks up to the first random person on the street in Wales. And he said, have you heard about the revival that's happening? He said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All you have to do is walk down this road and make a left, and you'll begin to feel it. I want a, like a church like that. Where's the directions? Just drive until your car shakes. <laughs> I want people tonight to walk past the theater, and I want them to feel it. You see, I don't know if you could tell, if you've been here all the sessions, it's like the more involved we all become, the more the walls begin to break. And from day one until now, till worship tonight, the way the Holy Spirit works is it begins to stir up a group of people, and all of a sudden, all the barriers and walls are starting to fall. And it's not even in this room, it's principalities over this city. And we're starting to hit that thing between the eyes. And I'm telling you, the whole giant's about to fall because people have joined the wind. And, and my desire is, is that starting tonight, the city would begin to feel not Habitation Ministries, not Risen Nation Church, but God showed up to the city and a group of people did this. Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And we've surrendered to the wind. But religion doesn't understand the wind. So they try to encapsulize it in the corner. And you can't. It's impossible. 
But religion only receives that, listen, it only receives that which it believes it can control. The son we get, the father, they think they can control this. But my invitation tonight, and I want to talk about the anointing, but before I do, my invitation tonight is that we decide from this moment forward that we individually in our homes, in our marriages, that we as a community, that we're going to follow the wind. That we're going to, I was crying during worship, praying this prayer over and over again. Holy Spirit, have a meeting tonight. God, I want it to be your conference. What if God put on a conference? And we just crawled off the stage and God walked in. Anyone believe it's possible? I'll tell you how we do it. We surrender. We just surrender. Even if it's awkward, we surrender. We throw up our sails. We say, we don't have the strength to do this. We don't have the power to do this. I've never gotten a word of knowledge that came from my brain, believe it or not. Do you know that? Do you know that you've never gotten a word of knowledge that came from your brain? That would make you a psychic. No, no, only by the power of the Spirit. Do you know that you've never healed the sick? I don't care how many people you've seen healed. Do you realize that you are a cup with really good water inside of it? And all God is looking for is not talent, not gifting, willingness. We're willing to surrender. Amen? So let's lift our hands. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Play it. Play it. Let's turn it up just a little bit. I want you to close your eyes. And in your own way, I'm not going to even tell you to do a certain thing. I want you to surrender your life all over again to him. If you're sick in body, I want you to forget about your sickness, and I want you to surrender your life all over to him again. If you're in need of something, forget about your need. Look at Jesus, and I want you just to say these words. Say, I surrender. Just say it. Just, re- just say it over and over again to him until he becomes real to you. Close your eyes and look at him and say, I surrender. Lord, we give you this room tonight. We give you our lives again tonight, Holy Spirit. Lord, you know that I have zero strength to lead anything tonight. Turn it up. And I surrender. And I surrender. And I want to know you more. And I surrender. And I surrender. And I want to know you more. Come on, sing it to him. And I surrender, and I surrender, and I want to know you. Come on. Hurry up, guys. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I surrender. Come on, lift it. I surrender. We surrender this city to you, Jesus. We surrender this city to you, Jesus. Come riding in. Come riding in. And I surrender. I surrender. Oh, we surrender to the wind. We surrender to the wind. Come like the wind. Come like the wind. Come on, they heard a sound like the sound of a mighty rushing wind. And the secret was, in one accord, they were singing songs to God. Oh, we want to know you. Oh, we want to know you. Oh, we want to know you. Oh, we want to know you, Lord. We surrender.
Sing it again. Sing it again. We surrender. I surrender. one more time come on smash that thing come on Cameron Just build it on the instruments build it on the instruments build it on the instruments Wow
just lift adoration all over the room. Come on. Lift adoration all over the room. We're just going to follow the wind. You are glorious. Maxly sing. That's it. Lift your soul. Lift your soul. Lift your soul.
say step in step with you Holy Spirit make Jesus real to us tonight Lord become real to those who are sick become real to those who are bound become real to our children become real to those family members we're praying for All we got to do is magnify your light. You take care of the rest. Go ahead and take your seats if you're standing. Stay with me, guys. Okay. Psalms 133. And I would ask, I feel the Lord so much. I don't want anyone, please, distracted. So I'm good with kids. If they got to pee, whatever, that's totally fine. But just do your best not to move around a lot. Psalms 133 says this, Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It's like, everyone say it's like, the precious oil on the head. It begins describing the beard of Aaron down to his beard, running down the collar of his robes. It's like the dew upon Mount Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. And for there, he commands the blessing life forevermore. I want to focus on just the first verse. Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell. That word dwell in Hebrew is brothers that build habitations together. And when brothers come together, brothers, sisters, you're all included. If I'm a bride, you're a son. Ladies, okay. But when we come together, he, it says, with this motivation of God, come and dwell. God, we want to have a habitation that you find rest in. We want to have churches that you're attracted to. I want to build something that is first and foremost attracted to the Lamb of God. It attracts him. He likes the smell when he comes in. Some of you are like, what's this guy talking about? I want to smell like bread to the Lord. But when we come together with this desire, we're going to build something that God likes. I feel the groaning of his heart, the grieving of his spirit over what we've built for people. I love people, but the command is this. Jesus responds to Pharisees trying to trap him and says, what's most important? Jesus responds and says, love God and love your neighbor as yourself. For all of the commands, hang on these two, there's a first, love him. And you can't love them unless you love him most. So the, the proclamation of Psalms 133 is when you 
build habitation together, it's like oil. Everyone say oil. Oil in the Old Testament describes the anointing. I have not, I don't remember, besides my father, I don't remember the last time I heard a message on the anointing. We said it this morning, a lot of self-help, no more self-denial, a lot of life coaching. We don't really have trumpets anymore. We have life coaches behind pulpits. And I'm not against life coaching. I'm just saying we need the anointing of the Holy Spirit, not more tactics. Not 12 to 13 step programs of how you get free. No, no, there is a man called freedom. And what, listen, what would happen if the man was attracted to what we built? People that need freedom need the man who's freedom. I know a one-step program named Jesus. And he'll walk into your room. We talked about it this morning, the drug addicts, the alcoholics. You Listen, you can go to AA meetings all you want, but you can't suppress the flesh. You can't. No matter what you do, you can't suppress the flesh. There's only one thing that can. He has a name. It's called the Holy Ghost. And he comes in and he removes desires from you. You used to be tempted. You see, people think that we can like somehow be born again, but still alive to an old life. That doesn't even logically make sense. You can't be dead and alive at the same time. You're either dead or you're alive. So to truly say that we are born again means that the old things don't knock on our door anymore. Because the power of the Holy Spirit, you may, you may be tempted to open the laptop, but I believe that a day is coming for you where you won't even be tempted anymore. Romans 6 says you have been set free. Not going to be set free. You have been set free from sin. Set free. Romans 7, it starts describing those under the law. The Bible wasn't written in chapters. Paul's writing a letter, and he's giving an explanation of what it's like under the law. What you will to do, you can't do. You can try as hard as you want. You can bite your lip as hard as you want, but your flesh will win. Rules and regulations can't get you there. So Romans 6, we're set free from sin, but then Romans 7, he's trapped in sin under the law. And then what does Romans 8 start with? Come on. Paul is brilliant. He says, but now. Everyone say, but now. There is therefore no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. And it goes on, those that are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. And then it takes it even further, and it says creation is groaning for them. Wow. We're trying to get past fleshly desires, but there's a man that wants to make residence inside of you by way of surrender. I love it. The Passion says, Romans 8, like this, now the case is closed. Somebody needs to hear this. Now the case is closed, and there remains no accusing voice of condemnation. Listen. I've always pictured, I heard someone describe it like this, and ever since then I've pictured it like this. If I sent my little boy to school and a teacher came up to him and every day of his life said, you'll amount to nothing. Don't even try because you're not good at it. Your life is worth nothing. As a father, what do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to take pastor hat off and I'm going to go to the school and I will find the voice of accusation. I'm gonna find the voice of the accuser and I'm gonna silence the voice. <laughs> you got kids, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I don't care what anybody thinks, you touch my kids, this little five seven Arab dude will turn Arab. Because <laughs> my mom's white, so sometimes I'm my mom, but I can be my dad. You yank on the wrong cord. Called my children. Right? And as a father, I would go to the school, I would silence the voice of the accuser, and then I would take my son, and I would spend eternity telling him how worth it he is. You know what the Holy Spirit does? He's our comforter. The implication is this. He walks with you, and he reminds you of the covenant that was made about you. 
He walks with you and he reminds you, don't forget what the father thinks about you. Remember when he only had one son and now he's got many. And he stands on our behalf as the advocate and we throw him aside in church. Wonder why we got problems. Wonder why we are getting good visitors packets but still leaving depressed. We need the anointing of the Holy Spirit because without the Holy Spirit, we're wasting our time. We're just yelling a lot and singing a lot of songs and he's not there. So I don't remember the last time I heard a message on the anointing, but this is, this is what the anointing means, listen, because I believe the Lord is gonna release his anointing tonight, not just for healing, not just for power, not just for deliverance, but anointing to be endued with power. Because what your workplace needs is you on fire with the power of God. You don't need a pulpit to be endued with the anointing. In the Old Testament, it only landed on the priests and the kings. But in the New Testament, we're called kings and priests. All of us are invited into this. So it's not just the one anointed person anymore. God says, I'm going to anoint a whole generation. Come on, I feel the Lord. I'm going to anoint an entire generation. And everywhere they go, oil's going to start dripping everywhere. So this is what the word anointing means. Listen, in the Old Testament, it's described like this, a smearing or a special endowment of the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, uh, the anointing is oil. In the New Testament, the anointing is described as the coming of the Holy Spirit. And the word that connects both of them is when when kings and priests were anointed in the Old Testament, they would have oil poured upon their head. Joel 2 begins to say, and the prophet Joel, he says that the Holy Spirit will come and he will be poured out. Everyone say poured out upon all flesh. And this is the anointing, the oil of God landing on a people. And so what oil is in the Old Old Testament, the Holy Spirit is in the new. Zechariah 4 brings it together. I I love Zechariah 4. I don't have time to go there. They told us we had to be out of the building at, at 11. So we need to pray like, well, we'll see. So, um, Zechariah 4, Zechariah has a vision, an experience, an encounter. And in the encounter, it says the, uh, an angel came to him and woke him up out of his sleep, kind of like the church. And it says, as a man, like a man that slumbered, the, an angel comes and wakes up Zechariah in chapter 4. And Zechariah goes into a vision after he wakes up. We've been talking about it the whole worship set. Resurrection's coming today. And he wakes up from sleeping dead place of unconsciousness. And he wakes up and he sees this vision. And what he sees is he sees a golden lampstand with golden pipes attached to two olive trees that are pouring oil into the lampstand. And he hears this word. He says, it's not by might. It's not by power, but it's by my spirit. And we see what oil is in the Old Testament become the supply of the Holy Spirit in the new. And there's this pour into the lampstand. Anyone ever read Matthew 25? Ten virgins, five are wise, five are unwise. Listen, the five unwise, they got the lampstand, but no oil supply. They got a ministry, but no oil supply. They got a gifting, but no oil supply. They got talents, but no oil supply. They can play the guitar and sing the roof off, but no oil supply. And at the end of the age, he could say, listen, he welcomes you in, but those that don't have a lantern don't know how to get there because it's just a facade. It's not actually on fire. But it was those who had reserves. It was those who had intimacy and history with God he lets in. You kept the lamp burning. The old lamps, you got to keep oil in them that keeps it burning. Keep pouring, and this is what Zechariah is saying. Constant flow of oil, and it's keeping the lamp burning. Constant flow of oil, and it's keeping the lamp burning. So the Holy Spirit comes, and Jesus tells us he will be in you and with you. In other words, he'll be the manifestation of God in you that groans unto the Father and prays and intercedes. It's about your edification between you and God. But then he establishes, but I will also be with you. In other words, remember when the Holy Spirit comes and he remains on Jesus, I believe that there's a manifestation of the Holy Spirit that is yes in me, makes up my identity, connects me to God. But then there's this manifestation of him if he sits on me like a dove. And he walks into places with you. Anyone ever met anybody that they just walk into the room and the room changes? 
Okay, maybe not. But I, I've met a lot of people that you get around them and you, you feel the dripping of oil on them. So I'm going to say something. I don't care if I'm on live stream. But I, I got invited, help us Holy Spirit, on Daystar. And I was so honored. I love Daystar. I love what they're doing. And, and I'm ministering. And, and this is me. I'm not talking about them, but this is me. And as I'm speaking on Daystar, I'm thinking, I'm not feeling the Lord. And after the session, the sweet man says, man, I feel the Lord in here. And I said, he's, I don't think he's here, bro. Me, I'm talking about me. And so, he, you know, he could tell I'm not feeling it. But after the session, we begin to talk and, and he makes this statement. He says, what is it about your family, your uncle? You know, the one with the white suit? He said, when he comes in the building, now he doesn't have this language, he doesn't understand. When he comes in the building, every time he comes to the studio, it's like God walks in with him. And in that moment, something erupted in my spirit. And I thought to myself, wow, what an opportunity. Maybe millions watching, but I felt empty. And then he makes this statement to me about my uncle walks into a room and God walks with them. And in this moment, it's like I have this picture from the Lord of what do you want? You want to be famous? Or do you want to change rooms with your presence? Maybe it's just the store. You want the Holy Spirit to linger around you or do you want Instagram followers? You want a big ministry or you want God to go to bed with you and wake up with you and raise your kids with you? Drive in the car with you. Listen, if, P if Peter's shadow can heal the sick, what are we doing with our lives? Well, that's just for the apostles. No, you've reasoned your way through your own weakness. You've created theology through your own weakness. But the scriptures say, I lay my hands on the sick. They're supposed to recover. End of story. Don't add and don't take away. Just believe. But the problem is, is we've gotten in the way. There's no more supply of the anointing. I don't hear about the anointing. Listen, I see charisma. We talk about it all the time. I see charisma. I see talent. Like anyone see the movie Jesus Revolution? Raise your hand. Absolutely life-changing movie. At the end of the movie, I was like, we're burning the whole thing to the ground. We're going to go to a beach somewhere. Because I'm a pendulum swinger. And then the team is like, let's not do that. Let's calm down. And I'm like, okay. So, uh, But, you know, I was stirred after I saw that movie. And I'm listening to this group called Love Song. And they sound terrible. Some of you really got offended just now. Part of the Jesus movie. I'm sorry. It, it doesn't sound like Bethel. It just doesn't. <laughs> it, it the, they didn't have the speakers we have today they're just better do you know that though if it wasn't for the jesus movement we wouldn't have electric guitar and drums in church a bunch of crazy hippies messed with the system they disrupted culture and today drums are my favorite thing in the entire world because some hippies disrupted culture it's time we start disrupting culture again right but here's the deal here's the deal i I, I think it sounds better today, but the anointing is not what it was. Listen, everything in the world has increased. Technology, education, the market. Like no matter what happens to the market, if you actually, everything just keeps kind of growing. You know, the only thing that's gotten weaker is the church. We've gotten bigger. We've got bigger buildings, more people. But the power that was in Acts is not what we're experiencing today. And, and listen, I'm all about going back to Acts, but you don't realize we should be experiencing greater things. Like, do you realize the way the anointing works, when you read about it in Psalms 133, it starts as just a trickle upon Mount Hermon. Just a, just a dew, just, just a little bit upon the head of Aaron, and as it runs down, it gathers and it builds. At the bottom of Mount Hermon, Hermon runs the Jordan River, and what starts as just a little dew on top turns into a stream and turns into a river that hits the whole earth goes into the ocean but we don't we settle for it sounding good we settle for people showing up and we have no idea what the anointing is so let me make it really clear the anointing is the holy spirit being poured out and it's smearing upon a people and it's being endued with power you realize in john 20 the holy spirit jesus breathes the holy spirit into the disciples they receive the holy spirit i believe this is the new birth but in Acts chapter 2, they were endued with power from on high. Jesus says, go and wait in Jerusalem. He told what, what scholars would say is more like 500 people, but only 120 listened and went to the upper room. 
And they're singing songs to the Lord in one accord. And as they're singing, they start hearing a sound like a mighty rushing wind. And it's a sound that, that nations gather to. And the Holy Spirit comes and it takes these weak, scared men that are hiding from persecution and women. And it turns them into witnesses endued with God's power. Do you know that not one of the disciples was ready nor had a doctorate degree? Do you realize that the people Jesus picked in that time, he's going to a tax collector, a fisherman, he didn't pick one rabbi. He went to a zealot, unqualified, untrained. I mean, they said about Peter, the Pharisee said, man, we don't, this is an unskilled, untrained man. He must have been with Jesus. I'm not against you going to college, but are you dripping with the Holy Spirit when you leave class or more knowledge? Are we building deep wells with no water in it? Where's the flow? So I, I come home to my dad and I'm frustrated, divine discontentment. And I'm saying, what, where's the anointing today? What happened to the anointing? What happened to the power? You know, growing up, my uncle would have 40 empty wheelchairs on stage just to flex at what the Lord's doing. When's the last time we saw someone get up out of a wheelchair? And no one talks about it because if it doesn't happen, it makes us look weak. Make, let it, let it look, make us look weak. We gotta keep preaching it until it happens because one way or another, this thing works, I promise. So I said, what happened? He's telling me stories, you know. I butcher this story every time. Something happened to this guy. My dad went to pray for him. He's laying in a hospital bed and he's got tubes and he can't breathe. So they put a tube down his neck so he could breathe. Family is in disarray. What do we do with him? My dad gets invited to come pray. My dad walks in and he hears the Lord say, pull the tube out, put your finger over the hole and tell him to breathe. And my dad is telling me a story. He said, I used to be nuts. I think he still is nuts. When he got up today, anyone was in the room this morning, and he just said, lift your hands. Oh, I felt electricity go through me behind. I don't even, I don't even understand it. <laughs> Every single person, not one person said good message. Every single person was like, bro, when your dad got up, whole room changed. I said, well, the son reveals the father, I guess. <laughs> By the way, the little lady right, right there that was singing right here, that's my mom. Uh, she's, this is a, a family, a family affair. And then my brother closed worship and I'm just crying going, look at our family. But my dad pulls the tube out, sticks his hand on the guy's neck, starts yelling, breathe. The family's freaking out. And he's either going to commit murder or the guy is going to start breathing. Did the guy start breathing? Yes, he did. What a freak. <laughs> we need more freaks. So the problem is, is I hear stuff like this and it bothers me. Anyone else? Like, in a good way, stirs me. See, I've got this problem, and the problem is, is when you've been touched by something authentic, the counterfeit doesn't work anymore. You can have the best looking sound system church in the world, but if the anointing is not there, it's just noise. Just a lot of noise and a lot of zeal with no power. You know, I, there was a crusade I've been talking about lately where my uncle's ministering, a lady got into a car accident right after her child, young daughter was born, and for two years paralyzed from the waist down. While they're worshiping, he's singing hallelujah, hallelujah. People start standing up. The lady stands up out of the wheelchair and comes running to the stage. She was paralyzed. She comes running to the stage. Her brothers are running after her screaming. What, what, and they're all crying. She comes running up on the stage. She's been completely healed. She stood up completely healed. 
And they're all crying, going, what is happening? She's been healed. And there comes the two-year-old little girl running through the crowd, jumps into her mom's arms. She's never held her two-year-old before like that. And we're just satisfied in Sunday, church. When's our Chili's reservation? The lady's still in the wheelchair. But nobody cares. So I was bothered. I asked my dad, you see, I just, I got some funny story to tell you. Uh, when I served under my uncle for uh, a season, we were in Rouen, France. He's holding a meeting. Now, at this time, I didn't want to preach. I didn't want to do anything. I was just a catcher. Anyone know what a catcher is? <laughs> All right, maybe not. YouTube it. Um, and so I saved people's lives, basically, for a living. I was a very good catcher. I was more athletic when I was 20. And, and I'm catching people, but I, I want... That's all I wanted to do. I, I served, I ran the events, and I caught the people that were getting touched by the Lord. But I was like thinking, this, this is crazy. These people are crazy. I, I don't know. But I'm a good catcher, right? So, so one time my uncle's worshiping, and, and he stops the whole thing. I mean, like from glory to you hear a pin drop. And he looks at me, and he calls me Willie. Now listen, nobody else is allowed to call me Willie. And he goes, Willie, there's somebody in the crowd that has a heart condition and it's causing pain on the left side of your neck, go find them. I said, come again? <laughs> this is a true story. And I thought, why, why? This is your meeting, you do it. And he stood there on stage and he crossed his little skinny arms and with his white suit and he stared at me. The band's not playing and there's 5,000 people there. And he's like, find them. I'm like, what do you mean? Ask the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to everyone. You got a heart condition. <laughs> it's a true story. Nope. And I'm begging people, please have a heart condition. I'm sweating through my suit. My heart is coming out of my chest. And he's getting angry with me. Like as if this is my problem. And he's going, Willie, you're not following the Holy Spirit. I'm like, what are you talking about? And he gets, he gets, he has enough. He's a very violent little man. He's like King Julian in Madagascar. <laughs> I could say that, we're family. Maurice. <laughs> so he, he has enough. We lost, we lost the meeting with that one. And, uh, and he says, he says, okay, walk down the middle aisle. So now I'm like just walking and I'm scared out of my mind. And he goes, stop. And I stop. Sorry, if I scare you. I'm trying to make it more dramatic. He stops. He goes, go down that aisle. And I go down the aisle. I'm trying to get past him. Excuse me, excuse me. This, this went on for 10 minutes. And he says, stop. It's the lady in front of you falls to the floor. I didn't even touch her. He just said, he said, stop. Falls to the floor. It's her. And in that moment, all the pain leaves. So, so listen, you see this stuff. And I'm like utterly confused. I don't understand it at all. And he's bothered with me for not following the Holy Spirit. I don't understand not a one word that's coming out of his mouth. But here's the problem is I saw it. You know, they said of the disciples, him who we have seen, heard, and handled with our hands, it's him we witness of. Do you even have a worthy witness if you haven't seen, heard, and handled with your hands? So when you see and you hear and you handle with your hands, we were in London and there's a lady, or she's 18 years old, she looks like she was 12, never walked in her life. He tells my cousin and I, go get her out of the wheelchair and walk her in a circle on the stage. We're at Westminster Hall in London. Thousands of people there and we're walking in a circle and I'm thinking to myself, this better work or we're gonna look real foolish. And he's yelling, keep walking and have faith. And the lady's feet are dragging on the stage. And I'm not over exaggerating, for 10 minutes we just went in a circle. And sure enough, the lady's legs start moving. 
do you realize what we're talking about here? We're dragging her feet on the stage and then they start working. What do you do with that? You just go to your hour and a half service and think everything's okay? No, you're ruined. So I asked my dad, I said, what happened? You know, my dad's rebuked me many times. This is why we need fathers. He came to the church one time, biggest turnout we've ever had. I thought he'd be proud of me. After service, he came to me and he started talking to me about the days when Oral Roberts would have tents and people would be in lines and come out with new limbs. And he said to me, son, your skinny jeans and fog machines ain't cutting it. He said, I raised a son to walk in power, not this. And I got up on Sunday and I repented. So I went to that man and I said, I, what happened to the, to the anointing? And his response shocked me. He looked at me and he said, compassion is gone. He said, compassion. I thought he was going to say fame, you know, money. He said, compassion isn't there anymore. And I started thinking to myself, man, we've lost the concept of why we're anointed. We think it's to build our ministries. We think it's to build our, our social media. But we forgot how many times Jesus is pulled on by compassion. And once he's pulled on by compassion, power comes. I mean, a lady is working her way through a crowd, touches the hem of his garment, and he feels virtue leave his body. And he says, who touched me? Everyone's touching him. But there was a certain touch that pulled on his virtue. I want to pull on God's virtue tonight. So I started thinking about Jesus stands up in Luke 4. We've got to understand, listen, as much as we are building a house for the Lord, you have to realize we are not talking about a building. We're not talking about four walls. We don't even have anywhere to meet yet. I'm praying we can meet here and, and figure out what we're going to do. But we're going to follow the cloud. But do you realize the house is you, which makes it a mobile house. Wherever you go, you are the house of God. And what are we doing if we're not seeing the sick healed? Jesus said it like this. He said, go and tell them the kingdom of God is at hand. And, everyone say and. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Guys, raise the dead. Cast out devils. First sign of a believer, cast out devils. Imagine if that was our membership classes. Get them in a line. Bring someone that has a demonic possession up here. Cast out the devil. Okay, you're in. Keep them coming. No, today we got cards and pastors act like they got tithing units and they exchange their, their baseball cards. This is what we've come to. Tithing units, numbers, logistics, analytics, no power. And we're more satisfied with a butt in a seat than the butt in that seat being transformed we've lost compassion for the people. So in our desire to build a habitation for God, you gotta understand Exodus 18, 19 says it like this. When he calls a priesthood, again, we're all invited in. When he calls a priesthood, he says he takes one from among the people for the people to be for the people Godward. This is our role, this is our duty, that we are supposed to leave this building today and being for the people toward God. In other words, he wants everybody to minister to him, pull them into it. Jesus stands up in Luke 4, and this man could have built the biggest ministry in the earth. He could have stayed, he could have built a castle in the sky and lived in it and floated down whenever he wanted to come talk to us. All power holds all things together by his word. Your body is literally held together by the power of Jesus. All things made through him, for him, and in him all things consist. And he said, I have to go. If he stayed in the flesh, nations would be in lines. In those days, they had to get near him to be healed. He had to touch them. But again, through the power, the pouring of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, Jesus ascends and he becomes unlimited. Now we don't have to go touch the 
the Jewish man, you just have to get in a room and you can be healed in the back and never have anybody lay hands on you because the Holy Spirit is in the room. The Holy Spirit is Jesus. It's Jesus with us. It's Jesus going, I'm one man, but I'm about to multiply by the billions. So he stands up in Luke 4 and he says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to the captives. And he goes through, he's, his, he is anointed to release them out of prison and heal the sick. And I think why we don't have the anointing today is we forgot why God put us on a stage. We forgot why God entrusted us with something. And it's not so we can build our big mega empire, it's so that we can invite in the sick and say, come touch this man. We need the pouring of the anointing. And like I said, it's not just for the priests anymore. It's not just for the king. But the credentials, listen, of the early church was power. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2, he said, I didn't come to you with the demonstrate. Listen, I didn't come to you with plausible words of wisdom and human intellect, but in the demonstration. Oh, everyone say demonstration the demonstration of the Spirit of God and power. I, I want a community that's marked with this. God is here. You walk in, you get touched by God. And, and I'm believing for a day when you'll ask, well, who's, who is the worship team? I have no idea. Who spoke that day? I don't know. I just know God was there. No more famous anything, just God too blinded by his power, too blinded by the anointing. You know, like I know when God's really involved because I don't wanna say anything. I just wanna sit down and shut up and let God take over. And my invitation to the Lord is that his anointing would come back tonight. And that he would anoint us individually because guys listen the world is dying and it's dark it needs the oil God wants to pour out on you and the credentials of the early church was power it's time we get back to that and don't reason our way out of it anymore I, I am I, I am unwilling to leave this room and someone that is demonically possessed I know that this is a bold statement but somebody that's put demonically possessed we have missed the mark if they leave with devils. Like we've missed the mark. I don't wanna see 20% healed, I wanna see everybody healed. And it's not gonna come by our own strength. It's not gonna come by our strong devotion, loud prayers and good music. It's gonna come by way of surrender. So come on, stand to your feet. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna worship Jesus. We're not gonna rush. I think we can do this by 11. And if we can't, we need the Holy Spirit to touch the workers here, so. <laughs> and I believe, and if you would be willing to believe with me, you gotta understand something about the way of the anointing. Jesus goes to his hometown and they're familiar with him. It's what my brother, Pastor Kossi, opened with. And where they were familiar with his presence, it says he couldn't. Guys, we're talking about the Lamb of God. He couldn't work many miracles there because the people were too familiar. They didn't receive him. He couldn't work many miracles there because there wasn't the hunger. They, had, they didn't have a need for him. They said, isn't this the carpenter's boy? Didn't we grow up with this man? You see, this is what makes John the Baptist given the privilege of having a forerunner spirit is he's the cousin of Jesus Christ, but yet he's in a Jordan looking at his cousin he grew up with saying, behold, the Lamb of God, he who comes to take away the sins of the world. And his reception of the Lord, his recognition of we're talking about God here, the recognition of that was presence, was power. 
So I will tell you, tonight is not dependent on my anointing. And it's not dependent on your anointing. It's not dependent on how good the sound is. And it's not dependent on how amazing the theater is. It's dependent on our desire, hunger, and surrender to the Holy Spirit. So if you want to surrender to him, just lift your, both your hands. And if you're sick in body, here's what I'm going to ask. We're going to worship, and I believe that God is going to begin to heal you. Wave at me if you're sick in your body. If you need healing, okay. So we're gonna worship, and when I tell some of our students, I want you guys to go pray for them, all right? And I believe that God's gonna heal people. If you're bound, I believe God is gonna set you free, all right? We are unwilling to finish this night without experiencing his power. Can we be like all resolute in that? Can we have this crazy desire that we aren't getting out of this room until he shows up? And listen, I'm going to be the persistent, annoying friend to the Lord, and I'm going to bang on the door. And I'm going to bang on the door, and I'm going to say, I want bread. And I'm not leaving until you give me bread. And he says, if, if we would give bread, being fathers in the natural, how much more our Heavenly Father will pour out the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? I think we just stopped asking. I think we got too prideful to ask because we're so full of ourselves. So I want you to lift your hands. I want you to forget who's around you. I want you to ask Him to come. Ask Him to touch your body. Ask him to heal your family. Ask him to set you free. And I believe he's going to touch us. And then we're going to move these chairs and we're going to ask the Lord to release his anointing upon us. Yeah. Amen. Okay, come on. Lift your voices out loud. Ask him. Man, I feel the Lord. Ask him. Pastor Dom and, or Don and Tim, come here. Come stand right here. Like the sound of many waters. It's the sound of worship coming from his throne. There are cries of adoration as men from every nation lift their voice to make his praises known. Singing Holy, holy, holy. Just forget about everything. Just worship it. And holy, holy, holy. The elders and angels bow. The redeemed worship. Come on, lift it. Lift it. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Sing, sing, sing. Holy, holy, holy are you. Lord. The elders and angels I pray for a fresh outpouring. A fresh outpouring upon Tim and Dawn. Jesus' mighty name. I pray for pastors being reignited with the flame of zeal and passion in Jesus' name. Cost. Where's Costi? Come pray for them. Ooh. It's a new day, Pastor Tim. It's a new day, Pastor Dawn. What you've been asking for, God's going to bring it to you. I said he's going to bring it to you. Oh, the redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you. Oh, holy, holy, holy are you. Holy, holy. The elders and angels bow. Worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you. Sing it again. Holy. Holy, holy, holy are you. Just 
brothers and angels bow the redeemed worship you now oh we worship Can you hear the sound of heaven like the sound of many waters? It's the sound of worship coming from his throne. There are cries of adoration as men from every nation lift their voice to make his glory known singing holy and holy 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 you lord holy holy you lord the elders and angels sick in your body raise your hand raise your hand students turn around find them go pray for them right now do it really quick doesn't need to be a long prayer and here's what I want you to do come on students do it quick go and pray for them ask the Holy Spirit to heal them and once he does I want you to bring them up to the front in the center Alex go pray go pray for someone In our God reigns. Yes. Come on, all we got to do is worship. Our God reigns. Come and move, Holy Spirit. Your kingdom reigns. Just quick prayer and bring them up. Quick prayer and bring them up. Once God touches their body. And if it's not something they physically can check, still bring them up and we're going to command it. We're going to seal it. And get all these chairs out of the way. All the chairs out of the way. Thank you for freedom. Come on, it's happening now. It's happening now. Oh, you reign, you reign, you reign, you reign. In our God reigns forever your King. Just worship Jesus.
truth be born in Jesus' name. Diabetes be born in Jesus' mighty name. Mighty brain headaches, get up. them, bring them here, bring them here, totally healed, totally whole, students at? Or did you bring someone up? How many students brought somebody up? Raise your hand. Bring them here. Is it because God's touching them? God heal her? Circulation. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. Do you have pain right now? Do you normally have pain? Okay, so when you sleep tonight, there's going to be no pain. In Jesus' name. Touch your Holy Spirit now. In Jesus' mighty name. Touch your Holy Spirit now. In Jesus' mighty name. Bring her closer. Touch your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Come here. In Jesus' name. Just keep, I want the students to tell me what's happening. Just bring them up. What happened? Did it go away yet? Come here. Father, I thank you for the spirit of infirmity to be gone now in Jesus' mighty name. All oh, back pain, Jesus' name. Jesus' name, check out your back. right now is it completely gone it's gone come on praise the Lord come here come here come here come here come here father I thank you totally whole the top of her head freedom now pray for her Alex just pray for her really quick freedom 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 in Jesus mighty name Jesus mighty name what happened what happened? I have rheumatoid arthritis and degeneration in my spine, and I have no pain in my neck now. It's gone. It's gone. Come on, give him praise, guys. Look at her. This is why we do it. Father, I thank you that it's never going to come back in Jesus' mighty name. Fresh fire upon her life in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Keep on coming. All you rain. Ask for prayer for some uh, hormonal problems I've had for a long time, and um, I've had infertility as a result. And um, 
And also just like, I think uh, pelvic floor problems. And as she was praying for me, I literally felt my bladder lift. <laughs> and my entire pelvic muscle go back into place. Touch your Holy Spirit fresh, fresh in Jesus' mighty name. Come here. Okay. Go pray for him. Tell me. In our God reigns. Just keep singing, just softly, just softly. Keep worshiping. Forever your kingdom reigns. Is there anybody else in here that struggles with diabetes or any sort of high blood pressure, high cholesterol? Lift your hands high so we can see. If they're next to you, you come here. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name right now. I thank you in Jesus' name that they're going to check their blood sugar tonight and all the balances and they're going to be whole in Jesus' name. And it's never going to be out of balance again. Come on, agree. It's never going to be out of balance again in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, you're going to run. You're going to be a runner. You are a runner. You keep running. You keep running. You keep running. Okay, if God touched your body while they pray for you, lift your hand. What happened? I was in the hospital a few weeks ago because I passed out at work and they said my blood pressure and heart rate were fluctuating a lot um, and they weren't really sure why they thought it was just because I was standing too much at work and they just gave me like a fainting disorder diagnosis and then I had a migraine yesterday when we came up here and I wasn't able to attend the first two things today and she prayed over me and I I am not dizzy anymore. I can like move on my legs and I... Is your migraine gone? Completely gone. Come on, give him praise. Does anybody else, does anybody else struggle with migraines or have one right now? You have one right now? Get up here right now. Come on. And if you struggle with it, lift your hand. If you're next to them, put, put your hand on their shoulder. Father, I thank you right now in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, stretch your hands. In Jesus' mighty name, that they will never touch them again, that she'll be free from it now. In Jesus' name, come here. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. All tension be gone. All tension be gone in the neck now. In Jesus' mighty name. Try moving your neck. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Do you have one right now? Jesus' name. No more migraines. Come on, guys. The Bible says, lay your hands on the sick, and the sick will recover. We believe your word, Jesus. Come on, we believe your word, Jesus. Just sing, Our God reigns. Sing it. In our God reigns forever. That's it. Thank you, Father. Check your neck. Lord. That is gone. <laughs> Come on. That's good. Jesus' name. Check it. Does your head hurt? Totally gone. Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' mighty name. And to never come back. And to never come back. Jesus' name. Did you guys put your hand on Clara? No more migraines. Check it again. Okay. Stay here. Is there anybody else that's been touched, healed? Come here. Oh, tell us. I had arthritis in my joints, my knees, my shoulders, my lower back. You know, they prayed for me back there. All gone. I have no pain.
<laughs> Restore compassion to us, God. Restore compassion to us, Lord. Anyone else? It's been healed. Are you still, who's believing for healing still? Wait, oh, come here. Well, hold on, are you been healed? Come on, come tell us about it. For years I've had back pain from motorcycle accidents when I was a kid. And uh, as Joshua was praying for me, I felt the muscles in my back just release. So. <laughs> come on, thank you God. Top of his head to the soles of his feet. Jesus' name, seal it, Lord. Seal it, Lord. Is there anyone else? Okay, if you're still believing for healing, raise your hand. Put your hand on them. Come on. Come here, Heather. Come here. Father, we thank you that you don't just want to heal some, you want to heal all. Come on. Come on. Agree with me. Agree with me. You don't want to just heal some, you want to heal all. Where's Alex at? Where's Alex? Come pray for them. Come here. You, come here. Our God, our Just build it a little bit more. Tell them what you just <laughs> Chronic stomach pain and issues all the time. I can't eat food. <laughs> I don't know. I think the pain is gone. <laughs> what? I had Lyme disease, yes. I pee in my stomach all the time. No. Come on, give the Lord praise. Hey, hey, look at me. Hey, you need to believe it. It's really gone. If you don't feel pain, that means it's gone. You realize that? It feels like. I don't remember what feeling normal feels like. This is normal. God, may she feel normal, which is no pain for the rest of her life. I rebuke Lyme disease. Jesus name spirit of infirmity you come out now in Jesus name is there any other women in here that struggle with stomach issues raise your hand come here stomach issue stuff I pray for a fire come on stretch your hands to go into their stomach God digestive issues being made whole now in Jesus mighty name may they feel like a heat coming in May they feel the heat coming in. Jonathan, lay hands on them. May they feel the heat coming in in Jesus' name. Jesus' mighty name. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fire of God. Fire of God. Fire of God. Come here. Come here. Fire of God. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Fill them to full. Breathe on them, Lord. Who else was there? Did you have some? Yeah, tell me. Did you get healed? <laughs> tell me. Um, I, I've had tinnitus for 15 years. And, you know, it's, you know, ringing, constant, constant, constant ringing. I, and uh, I've had two strokes. And I couldn't see. And, I, I mean, I, I, I could see when I got in here, but I had two strokes. One affected my balance. One affected my sight. And then the tinnitus was, you know, of course, my hearing. And then I have a heart, an irregular heartbeat. So I, in the last 15 years, uh, the enemy has been trying to get, get to my heart and to my ears and to my balance and into my sight. And tonight, I, I have no ringing in my ears for like 15 years. Come on, give him praise. Yeah. Never again, God. Never again, God. Totally whole. Totally whole. Totally whole. Totally whole. 
freedom. Every devil, every suicidal thought, get out of this room in Jesus' name. Bring her over here. Jesus' mighty name. Yep. did this this morning we need to do it again if you deal with like fear and anxiety lift your hand come on it's time to get free get up here right now right now come on get up here suicidal thoughts and if you're still believing for healing lift your hand so a student can identify you come on there's way too many hands lifted they need to all be down go find them students and pray for them Tim come pray for them yeah, G, G. Cast it out. Cast it out, Gerardo. Cast it out. Father, we thank you for freedom hitting this room now. Come on, lift your hands. Don't watch. Freedom hitting this room now. Every devil of fear. Get out in Jesus' name. Ah, get out. Free. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Freedom. 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 Come on. Just lift it. Come on, lift it. Play it. Freedom. Our God. Come on, build it. Come on, Cameron. The song of freedom arrives.
Your name is Hephzibah. He delights in you. Yeah. Stretch your hands. God, I thank you for our kids. Come on. This is what I'm talking about. This is what we're contending for. We're not here to play church. Lord, every ounce of fear that has infiltrated the next generation, we command it to get out of this room now. In Jesus' mighty name, from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, no more sleepless nights, no more fear. Your name will not be Ben Onai. But your name will be Benjamin. Change the trajectory, God, of a generation. He calls you Hephzibah. He delights in you. And he hasn't given you the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. I thank you for a sound mind. Sound mind. If you're still believing for healing, lift your hand. And I want you guys to, to go to the, this side over here. And I want our students to pray for them until every single one of them's healed. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to do it quick. The Lord told me that he will pour out his anointing tonight for those who want it. And here's the deal. God wants to anoint everybody. God wants everybody to walk in power. God wants everybody to walk in glory. And he's pouring it out on a priesthood that's hungry. And I'm believing that tonight you're going to leave this theater dripping with oil. If you want it, I want you to run up here. I know we don't have room, but we'll find a way to figure it out. Get up here right now. Okay, I need to get up. as tight as you can come. As tight as you can come, come on. If you're still praying for her, bring her over there and the students, all you guys pray for her over there. Come on. Lift your hands, may he pour out his oil. Come on, come close. Come close. So Father, I thank you. Lift your hands. Time to come home. Come on, keep singing, keep singing, keep singing. Sing it. 
Come on, lift your hands. Holy Spirit, I ask that you just begin to pour it out. I ask that you begin to pour it out, God. Just a couple more minutes. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Yes. Yes. Oh, God, I pray that you pour out your spirit afresh in Jesus' mighty name. That you don't leave us empty. But you promise if we ask you for bread, you're not giving us a stone. Come on, ask him for bread. Ask him for bread. anointing upon our students a fresh anointing upon our students God Jesus mighty name fresh and filling fresh oil Jesus name fresh oil oh, oh. come on come on come on come on come on come on oh. no way I can lay hands on all of you this would be impossible but here's the deal I don't need to the Holy Spirit is a big boy and he can touch every single one of you yeah, yeah. come here and all the way up on stage. No, no, you stay here. I want Keenan. But touch him, God. Fill him, Jesus. Yeah, come here. Come on. Don't resist it. <laughs> Fill him fresh. In Jesus' name. Fill him fresh. Something he's never experienced before. Something he's never experienced before. Don't, don't, don't touch him. Okay, lift your hands, come on. Stretch your hands towards these two for a second. This is a voice within our generation. God, I thank you that miracles, signs, and wonders are going to begin to break out in his ministry. Divine disruption in the church. Divine disruption in home church. Fill him fresh, God. Fill him fresh, Jesus. Fill him fresh, Jesus. It's just the beginning for you, Kenan. I said it's just the beginning for you. It's just the beginning for you. You haven't even begun to see. Get the whole house. Hold the baby strong. Get the whole house. Don't let her fall. Get the whole house, God.
Okay, take the hand of the person next to you. Here's what we're gonna ask the Lord to do. Doesn't matter what it looks like, but I learned this little secret with my uncle that if he touches the person next to you and you're holding their hand, that he'll just kind of flow through like a train. So I figure we try it, because there's no way that this is going to work, okay? Any other way. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to yell fire when I say three, and you guys play that thing and do it with all your heart. Do the symbols. All right. Lift your hands, hold hands and lift them. And guys, listen, it doesn't matter what it looks like. I am believing that the Holy Spirit is going to be poured out. No matter what it feels like, it doesn't matter. You just have to believe. You yell fire and let the Holy Spirit touch you. Ready? One, with all your heart. One, two, three. Come on, fire. Fire. Woo! Fill them with your spirit, God. Fill them with your spirit, Lord. Do it with your spirit, God. A fresh pouring. A fresh pouring. A fresh pouring, God. A fresh pouring, God. <laughs> Keep going, keep going. A fresh pouring Holy Spirit. A fresh pouring Holy Spirit. Yes. Come like the wind. Come like the wind. Come like the wind. <laughs> Come on. Lift your voices. Let him touch you. Let him have you. Let him have you. Woo. Tim, get Tim. Tell Tim to come up here. Come here. Come on, quick. Quick. Oh. Come on, keep asking him. Keep asking him. Keep asking him. Lift your hands. Put your hands up. God, I thank you. Father in the city, keep singing. Miracle signs and wonders unlike anything you've seen. Unlike anything you've seen. God, rest, God, rest, God. Find your dwelling place. Find your dwelling place. Pour out your oil. Pour out your oil. All Jesus had to do was he went, breathe in the Holy Spirit. And everything changed. I believe with all of my heart that the oil of the Spirit is upon your life. You have to believe that God has endued you with power. You, come here. Beard, beautiful beard. Come here. Yeah, fresh and filling for you. Fresh and filling for you. Lift your hands. Fresh and filling for you. You're just dripping. You're dripping. You're dripping. You're dripping. You're dripping. Fresh and filling, God, for him. Fill him. Fill. 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 Jesus name God, I thank you for new oil, 
for a new day upon every single one of us. We don't want to leave the same. We don't want to leave the same. And now here's the commitment. Go and throw that oil everywhere you go. Go and bring that oil everywhere that you go. Remember compassion. Remember the Holy Spirit came that you might be witnesses. And it's environments like this that we can say, we've seen him, we've touched him. We beheld his glory. How can we not witness of what we've seen and handled with our hands? Can we give God praise for all the miracles? Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Lord, for being here. Thank you for what you did this weekend. Thank you for what you're going to continue to do, Holy Spirit. I pray every single one of them wake up tomorrow and go, I don't know why everything just feels different. The grass is greener. The sky is bluer. Use them for your glory, God. Use them for your glory, God. We thank you for his oil. We thank you for the anointing. Now listen, tomorrow night, tomorrow night, we're going to the gate. Everyone say the gate in Franklin. You, missed, you didn't say the Franklin part. The gate in Franklin. There we go. Clara, come here. Sorry. I don't know. Come here, Clara. Yep. Trying to end. Thank you, Father, for Clara. Thank you for the worship that's coming out of her, God. Okay, the gate, Franklin, all right? I'm telling you, we're not just planting another church on another corner. We want to build a dwelling place for the Lord. And we're going to start with this man here that I've been talking about. He's going to minister, and I believe something's going to break loose tomorrow night. So I would ask that invite your, it's a much bigger facility, so invite your friends. We have no seating limits. We wanted to have Children's Church for zero to four, but nobody signed up, which means you all want to be in the room, and you're just going to bring your kids, and that's fine, all right? But we do need volunteers, seriously. If you guys could really help us, that would be fantastic, because uh, we can't help your kids if you can't be willing to volunteer. So that's just kind of how it works, but anyway, so... Um, Tomorrow night, 6 o'clock at the gate, we're going to worship, we're going to go after his presence, and we're going to establish resonation in this area of Franklin, Tennessee, and we believe heaven is going to invade earth here. Amen. So come be a part. Come here, my dad. Thank you guys for coming to Habitation. May, may we never be the same. May, may something, you know, in seed form begin to grow. And I challenge you, don't just go home and go back to your normal life filled with TV shows and nothingness. I dare you to crawl to your knees tonight. I dare you to get to know God because he's worthy and you're his reward and he wants intimacy with you. He wants an encounter with you and I'm telling you the Lord is going to begin to drip off of you amazing people. All you got to do is live in the oil live in it. Don't be a lamp without oil. Be a lamp with oil. Amen. So one more time, may the anointing of your spirit, God, rest upon every single one of them. We worship you. We give you honor. I pray that the city heard it. It's interesting. The principalities that we were coming against that I felt night one, I don't feel anymore. I thank you, Lord, that I, I, I keep hearing this. The skies have been cleared. Wow, the skies have been cleared. It's time to lift our voice and make his praises known to a city where they said dreams come and die. Yeah, yeah, he's resurrecting his dream inside of a people. Amen. Let's give him praise and then you're free to go. We love you guys. Have an amazing night. We got to be out of here by 11, so please leave quick. I'll see you guys tomorrow night at 6 o'clock at the gate.